cartoons want to play Spanish music. And this is the reason why I composed this little exercise, this little composition that has some elements of the Spanish Malagueña. My point was that I wanted my students to practice a very important guitar technique and that is the alteration of the thumb and the first finger in the right hand. So in this video I will show you very slowly how to play this piece tone by tone. And in the second part of the video we will go deeper into the technique. I will give you a few tips on how to improve it and I will also share with you two great exercises that will improve your right hand technique substantially if you add it to your daily routine. So let's start. As I have mentioned before, the right hand fingering is pretty simple. You are alternating the thumb and the first finger. So basically you're playing this movement now, very important is that the music happens in the thumb. Your thumb plays the melody. And the first finger plays between each tone of the melody an empty E string, always. So that's why I will just name the tones you play with your thumb and you just play an empty E string after each bass tone. So let's start. The first tone you play is the tone E, the, the middle finger, second fret, fourth string. Then you play G sharp, first fret, G string. And then you play an empty B string. The following bar is the same. So again, E with the middle finger, fourth string, G sharp with the first finger, G string, and then empty B string. Now you move the whole shape that you have, these two fingers, in the left hand and you move them one string lower. Just lift them a little bit above the strings, just one millimeter and move them one string lower. Don't make this movement. Yeah? Just lift up a little bit and move them like this. And then you play A with the middle finger, C with the first finger, B string, then you lift up the first finger, then you play the tone A, middle finger, and now you lift up the middle finger, you play an empty G string, and then you play the tone F with the ring finger, fourth string, third fret. So now I will repeat the whole phrase. G sharp, B, again, E, G sharp, B. Now you move the whole shape one string lower, A, C, B, A, G, F. You close the phrase with these two chords. So let's start with the left hand. First you play the empty E string and then you play the tone B with the middle finger, A string, 2nd fret, then the tone F with the little finger, 4th string, 3rd fret, and then the G sharp with the 1st finger, 3rd string, then the empty strings, E and B. So again, empty E string, and then this shape. The second chord is simple, it's just E major, as you see the ring finger is free here, I just lift up the little finger and I am in E major chord, I play the second fret with my ring finger. What happens in the right hand? Very important is the form 
of the hand when you start playing it, uh, especially the bass. Your hand must be closed like this, not opened. Why? Because when, when it's closed, you play the bass tone and you're ready for the strum. Regarding the bass tone, I play, I play it with a thumb, apoyando, meaning rest stroke. That means that I push through the string and land on the A string. So it's it has certain power to it. And because my hand is closed, I just strum with the outer part of my fingers like this across the strings. The leading finger is the first finger, so you see? And then you play an upstroke. It can be very light just with the first finger. Again. Again. For the following part, you have to move your left hand to the third position. That means that your first finger is in the third fret. You take this shape, it is a shape of C major. You play the fifth fret with your ring finger, G string. Your little finger is on the B string, fifth fret. And your first finger is in the third fret, E string. This is the only exception in this piece where you play between each bass tone, tone G. Instead of the empty string, you play the G. So you play the tone C, ring finger, then tone E, C, and now you lift up these two fingers and you play empty B string, then the tone G with the first finger, and then the tone G again, empty G string. So again, C, E, C, now B, G, and G. You will count like this, one and two and three and, and in the second bar we have quarter note, that means that we are going to count one and two and three and. So I repeat, one and two and three and, one and two and three. So for the following part, you move again to the first position. Now you play again between each bass tone, just the empty E string with your first finger. And the melody goes like this. You start with the tone A, middle finger, G string, second fret. Then tone C, first finger, B string, first fret. Now you go back to the tone A, 2nd fret, now you play G sharp with the 1st finger, 1st fret, G string, then the empty E string with your 1st finger in the right hand, and then you play the tone E with the middle finger, 2nd fret, D string. I repeat, A. C, A, G sharp, E, and E. You will be counting like this. One and two and three and one and two and three and. The following part starts with the tone A, second fret, middle finger again. Then tone C, 1st fret B string, 1st finger, tone A again with the middle finger, 
Now you lift up your left hand finger slightly above the strings. Don't do this movement. You never straight up your fingers in the left hand. You just keep the form, okay? And now you play the empty G string, B string, G string. You have just empty strings in this bar. And then you play tone F with the ring finger, third fret, fourth string. Tone A with the middle finger, second fret G string. You go back to F, ring finger, third fret. And now you play the tone E with the middle finger, fourth string, second fret. G sharp with the first finger, first fret, third string. And empty B string. So again, I will go very slowly through the whole stuff. So we start with A, C, A. Then you lift up all your fingers slightly above the strings and you play the empty strings. G, B, G. You can slowly move your ring finger towards the F that you will need. And then you play F, A, sharp B as you see I play the last bar only with my thumb using the technique called apoyando it's a Spanish technique used a lot in the flamenco that means that you push through the string and land on the on another string that is lower you don't end up in the air you just push through the string and land on the lower one. I play the whole bar like that. For this technique you should change the position of your wrist in the right hand. You should make your wrist a little bit higher and create a little arch. But we will discuss this in the later part of this video. Now I will show you how you are going to count. So one and of this song you just move the shape that you played in the previous bar this one one fret higher just make sure when you're changing the position that your hand is completely relaxed uh, that's a mistake that many guitar players make there they don't relieve the tension and they move their hand and that just builds up the tension and destroys the control that you should have so just make sure consciously that your hand is relaxed before you make the movement you can slide with the first finger or with both fingers as you wish you just take the same shape and you play the tone F with the middle finger third fret D string the tone A on the G string first finger and then the empty B string now relax your hand again and slide back to the first position. You just remain in the same form and you play tone E with the middle finger, G sharp with the first finger and the empty B string. Now you slide back and play again the same F, A, empty B and now you go back again and play the same E G sharp B and the last chords of this song are the same that we have already learned so you play these shapes twice and then finish with a minor chord so now I will describe it again so you play the bass E, then you play this shape, tone B with the middle finger, 
fifth string, F with a little finger, D string, third fret, and G sharp with a first finger, G string. So bass, this shape, and then you go back to E major shape, you just lift up your little finger. You play this twice, and then you move this whole shape one string lower, like this, and you strum the A minor chord. Just make sure when you strum the A minor chord that you don't hit the low E string, strum from the fifth string. As I've mentioned before, just close your hand, play apoyando, rest stroke, push through the string, then you strum, gentle upstroke with the first finger again. Thumb, downstroke, upstroke, and now you strum from the fifth string, A minor shape. Let me now give you a few tips on the right hand guitar technique. I will also show you two cool exercises that are an introduction to a very important guitar technique that every guitar player should practice. When you play a melody with a thumb, you need very good articulated bass that stands out. And what I would suggest to you is to experiment with the hand and wrist position. So I will give you an example. When I play normal bass, my thumb is quite flat. Like here, for example. But as soon as I play melody with my thumb, I put it in this position. You see? The tone is different, the position is different. I lift up my wrist and play with a fingertip. Or rather, with a fingertip, it's not the precise fingertip, but I don't play with this part of the thumb. Just play with this part of the thumb. So it's a big difference when I play this. And when I play this. Because thanks to the position in which your wrist is higher and your thumb plays with a tip, you create an arch that connects the thumb with your whole arm and therefore it has much more substance. And this position is not only my tip, I learned it during my flamenco lessons at the Music University in Vienna. And you can see all the great flamenco players constantly changing the position of their hand depending on what they need. So my suggestion for you would be to experiment with the position of your wrist and the thumb. Try different angles and observe how it affects your tone and find the sweet spot, the sweet position in which your thumb has more substance and it's pleasant to play. exercise that I would recommend to my students would be playing the thumb and the first finger alternation from the strings. So let me show you. We're going to play on the empty strings now so that we can only focus on the right hand. So put your wrist higher and place both fingers on the strings. The thumb is on the sixth string and the first finger is on the first string. Now start with your thumb. Play and place it on the fifth string. You see both fingers are on the strings. Now you play with the first finger. You play and place it back on the first string. Now you play with the thumb again. You play and place it on the fourth string again. Both of these fingers are on the strings. Now you play with the first finger back on the string. Now you play with the thumb and place it on the G string, the first finger and back. Now the thumb plays and you place it on the B string. Then you play with the first finger and you place it back. 
Now you play with the thumb and you go backwards. So you play and place it on the G string. Now you play again with the first finger. Now we play with the thumb and place it on the D string. First finger again. Back on the string. Now you play with the thumb and place it again one string lower. First finger. And again top A and place it on the sixth string. First finger. So why do we do that? There are so many benefits, especially for those who start playing the guitar. If you practice this way, you stabilize your hand. It is calm because both fingers are on the strings all the time. So you realize what it feels like when you have full control. You learn to use only one finger and relax with the rest of the hand. Because if you play so slowly, and you feel both fingers on the strings. So once you play with one finger, you can always check if the rest of the hand is free. You also learn the connection between your finger and the string. You can find the best spot on your finger to create the most beautiful tone. So you should cultivate this feeling of control and stability because it is the way how you want to feel when you play. And this exercise serves as a stage for the next crucially important step. So play it for a while and focus on relaxing the hand. Check the tension in your hand. Play it so slowly because then you can feel everything. And play it, for example, three times upwards and downwards. And then you can proceed to the next exercise. This exercise is an introduction to a very important guitar technique that I call partial preparation. So what does it mean? We are going to play the same tones as we did in the previous exercise. But this is the difference. Only one finger is on the string and the second one is close above it, but does not touch it. Now you play and at the same moment you plant the next finger. Again, one finger on the string, the second one is close above it and then you play and plant at the same time. Very important is to do it in one moment. The playing and planting happens at the same time. This is one of the most important techniques in the right hand. We don't have time to cover it in depth in this video, but let me tell you that this one is one of the most important components for speed. So in order to be able to play this technique, your hand should be in a very special balance. It should be calm. Don't forget to lift up your wrist what you're doing is actually this movement, closing these two fingers. And when I play it, you see that my hand does not move, just my fingers do. And your goal is to find the perfect position and balance in your hand. So what I would recommend is to practice very slowly, but prepare fast. What helps a lot is always to put your finger back to a string that you need after you play. So I play and I don't stay here. I go back to the next string that I need, close above it. And then I play with the first finger, you see, and I'm there. And the same happens with my first finger. I play and immediately I go back to the starting position. So. I don't stay here, I go back and put it where I need it and then play and I'm there. This is a very crucial aspect of this technique. So that's why practice in this tempo, for example, play it so slowly. Once you find the right position of your hand and the right balance, it 
will be ready to play faster with better control. Well, that's it for now. I hope this video was helpful to you. Let me know in the comments below what do you struggle with, what are your challenges, and I wish you a very productive and pleasant practicing session. See you soon.